Hey, what is up friends? My name is Dan and today I wanted to talk about Blackmagic RAW because thanks to a company called Autochroma and their plugin called BRAW Studio, we finally have the ability to edit Blackmagic RAW footage inside of Adobe Premiere. Now their plugin has been available for Windows for a few months, but they finally released a version for Mac OS and that's huge for me. I spent about half of my week working with ProRes 422 footage in Adobe Premiere, but I think in order to get the most out of the Pocket 4K, you really need to be shooting in Blackmagic RAW. So let's jump into Adobe Premiere and see how well BRAW Studio actually works. All right, so I'm inside of Adobe Premiere. I have the plugin installed and activated, and I kind of just want to run through my normal checklist for the life cycle of a project. With that in mind, before we can even get started on an edit, we have a pretty important first step that hopefully isn't too much of a hurdle for BRAW Studio. And that of course is importing media. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this folder of Blackmagic RAW footage that I have set aside specifically for this project. And with that, BRAW Studio has passed its first test or cleared its first hurdle. So the next thing I wanna do is go through some of this media and see if it plays back in the source window. I'm starting at full resolution, but as you can see, my computer's having a fair amount of trouble with it. So I'm going to stop down to 1 8th resolution just to see if that works. As you can see, my computer is still struggling quite a bit. So what I'm going to do next is create a sequence, render that sequence and see if that helps. And my workflow for that is usually just right clicking on the clip and going down to new sequence from clip so that Ideally, the sequence is optimized for that footage. It looks like rendering the timeline has solved my playback issue. I'm able to play this footage back at full resolution, which is super dope, but if you're working on a tight deadline and you don't have time to render all of your footage before you get started on an edit, maybe BRAW Studio inside of Adobe Premiere isn't the best choice just yet, but because I'm not working on a tight deadline, I'm just gonna skip ahead for now. Okay, so this next section is the part that I am most excited for. What we're going to do here is take a look at the controls that BRAW Studio gives us, which is where the flexibility of Blackmagic RAW is really going to come into play. So to do that, we're going to double click on one of these files and go into the effects controls panel. Now there's nothing over here in this section, but if you go over to the master effects tab, that's where BRAW Studio lives. If you've ever worked with raw footage inside of DaVinci Resolve, this panel should look really familiar. The first thing we need to do is change the decode setting from camera metadata to clip. As you can see, we now have control over ISO, exposure, and white balance, and that's all super exciting. You may have also noticed that I added a few more clips to the timeline that we were already working on, and that's for a very specific reason. These clips in particular all deal with harsh lighting conditions because that's where I think Blackmagic RAW footage is really going to shine. The first clip I want to take a look at is one where I shot at the wrong white balance and overexposed my highlights because I wanted to see what kind of flexibility I had using Blackmagic RAW footage. First things first, let's jump into the white balance controls. You can see right here that I shot this at 4000 Kelvin, which is clearly not right. It's pretty blue. So let's just scroll through some of these presets and see how they look. Daylight's closer. Cloudy maybe is a little too warm. Shade is definitely too warm. But what's cool is you can see that the Kelvin value actually changes right here and you can set it to whatever you want. So for now, let's go with 5600 because it's nice and easy. So the next thing I want to do is check out this little box right here, which is the thing that I'm truly the most excited about. And as I click it, take a look at the scopes over here. Currently, you can see that we're clipping real hard. There's no data here. There's nothing. But what happens when I click it? We get a lot of that information back. We get a lot of detail there. Now, sure, some of those highlights are definitely still overexposed, but it feels much more natural, much more organic unless like it's just clipped. The next thing I wanna do is jump over here into the exposure slider just to see if we can pull back any more of that highlight detail. So I'm gonna drop this an entire stop, but 
it looks to me like that's pretty much the limit, and that's okay. This was really a torture test just to see how far we could go. So I'm gonna reset this to zero because I wanna see how big of a difference there is with just those two changes I made. Those changes being the white balance and the highlight recovery. So I'm going to turn this effect off and then back on. Off and then back on. Now to me, even just these two changes are enough for me to always wanna shoot in Blackmagic Raw because the amount of recovery in these highlights is absolutely crazy. You can see right down here that before clicking the highlight recovery, there's no detail in the grass. And of course, some of the highlights are still blown out, but that's to be expected. Like I said, this was a pretty extreme test. But so far, I'm really excited about b -Raw Studio inside of Premiere. Okay, let's jump into another clip, which is pretty similar. The white balance isn't quite as incorrect, but as you can see, these highlights are totally gone. There's no detail up here. So the first thing I want to do is change this to clip, just like before, which unlocks all of the controls. And let's just jump right into highlight recovery to see what happens. Now you can see the highlights are still blown out, but we've got a much more natural roll off, especially over here where it's got a hint of blue, but also you get a lot of detail back around the fine edges of this tree. So let's turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. The next thing I want to do is the same thing we did before. I want to try and drop the exposure. We're going to do a whole stop this time. And we're still in the same boat. We didn't really get much detail back, but that's not that surprising. I was shooting directly into the sun. Okay, so the last clip I want to take a look at before we move on to the next step is this shot of my wife. I picked this one, one, because I love her, but two, because it's a much more neutral shot. We're not trying to recover anything in particular. I just want to take a look at what is possible. Okay, so obviously the white balance is a little bit cool here, so let's adjust that to 6,000 Kelvin. That looks pretty good. I want to add just a hair of magenta to even that out, and this is a pretty good starting point. So the next thing I want to do is adjust the ISO because this shot is a little bit dark. So let's bring that up to 400 and that looks a lot nicer. One thing to note here is that b -Raw Studio does live in the Master Effects tab. So anytime you make a change here, it applies to that clip anywhere else inside of that project. Now, because that's the case, let's go back to the individual clip tab and then jump into Lumetri Color. Now over here, because this clip is still log, I want to apply a LUT. And the LUT I like to use is one that I found in DaVinci. It's just RE log C to video 709. Now that's pretty intense. So let's dial that back to 65%, which is what I usually use. And that looks a lot nicer. So here's just a quick before and after on that LUT. The next thing I'm gonna do is bring up the shadows a little bit, increase the saturation just a hair, and maybe add a little extra warmth. And since we're here, let's just fade it for funsies. And overall, I think this is a really beautiful image. Now, I don't know if this shot in particular needed to be shot in Blackmagic Raw, but knowing that I had the flexibility to change any exposure or white balance mistakes later really made me focus on the composition in the moment a lot more than I normally would. Side note, look how sick that sunset reflection looks in her eyes. All right, so we're in a new timeline here because I wanna test one final thing when it comes to b -Raw Studio inside of Adobe Premiere, and that's an export. If this doesn't work, everything else we've just gone through doesn't matter. So I've got an edit put together which should look familiar if you saw my last video, but that version was actually done in DaVinci Resolve, which kind of gave me its own headaches during export. So I'm hoping that I won't have those same issues exporting out of Premiere. So we're gonna jump into the export panel and use the standard QuickTime ProRes 422 preset and just hope for the best. 2000 years later. Okay, so I've got good news and bad news. The good news is that I was able to get the video to export. The bad news is that it took a couple tries. The first one failed at 30%, the second one failed at like 63%, and then Premiere started to just crash 
and I can't say with any certainty whether or not that's related to the plugin or not because I have had some stability issues with Premiere recently. So for the time being, I really don't think that I can rely on B-Raw Studio and Premiere for any paid work, but I think because I can still fall back on DaVinci Resolve, I'm still gonna shoot Blackmagic Raw for any personal projects that I do. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about B-Raw Studio. Do you think you'll try to implement it into your daily workflow? And while you're here, check out this video I made shot in Blackmagic Raw.